welcome, welcome uh, to another episode of uh, in the uh, the Bible read through uh, the N- the NIV translation. NIV stands for New International Version, and uh, yeah, and uh, I'm gonna start off by saying what my I guess my religion is so so you and you can kind of do your research to see to see where your um, where your uh, where your perspective if you align if your religion aligns with mine if, if the, what I'm going to be reading aligns with mine if you are not a, a Christian or uh, and you know whatever you know uh, but uh, in this episode. We're gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing reading through Genesis chapter 28. And check out the playlist if you want, uh, and that's in the top right corner at the beginning of the video. It'll, it's a link to the to the like I said the playlist, and it has all that I've it says all the chapters that I've recorded so far. I'm a good way into Genesis. Like I, you know, there's only like there's like 50 Genesis Genesis chapters, and uh, yeah. Uh, let's get into it. Genesis chapter 28. Uh, Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. He had to, he said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are near, then I will kill my brother Jacob. When Rebekah was told what her older son Esau had said, she sent for her younger son Jacob and said to him, Your brother Esau is consoling him himself with the thought of killing you. Now then, my son, do what I say. Flee at once to my brother Laban in Haran. Stay with him for a while until your brother's fury subsides. When your brother is no longer angry with you and forgets what you did to him, I'll send word for you to come back from there. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I'm disgusted with living because of these Hittite women. If Jacob takes a wife from among the women, the women of this land, from Hittite women like the... Oh, crap. Ah, uh, I, I cut off my last video too early. I didn't read I don't think I read. Uh, I stopped at a little bit before 28. That the you will throw his yoke from your neck or whatever he was talking. When Jacob was talking to so. Anyway, yeah, it's fine. All right, so this will just be, uh, yeah, I'll just add it to verse twenty-eight because it was it was a nice cutoff point before, I guess. So twenty-eight and a little bit of twenty-seven, a little bit of twenty-seven, and no big deal. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. If, if Jacob takes away from among the women of this land from Hittite women like these, my life will not be worth living. So Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him. So, and commanded him, Do not carry a Canaanite woman. Go at once to Padan Aram, to, to the house of your, your mother's father Bethuel. Take a wife for yourself there from among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and, and increase your numbers until you become a community of peoples. May he give you and your descendants the blessing given to Abraham, so that you may take possession of the land where you now live as an alien. The land God gave to Abraham. Then Isaac sent Jacob on his way, and he went to Paddan Aram, to Laban, son of Bethuel, the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, who was the mother of Jacob and his soul. Now it was so learned that Isaac had blessed Jacob, and had sent him to Padan Aram, take a wife, take a wife from there. And then when he blessed him, he commanded him, "Do not marry a Canaanite woman." And that Jacob had obeyed his father and mother and had gone to Padan Aram. So then realized how displeasing the Canaanite women were to his father Isaac. So he went to Ishmael and married Mahalath, the sister of Nebaioth and daughter of Ish- and daughter of Ishmael, son of Abraham. In addition to the wives he already had. So I don't know if that's a Canaanite 
But um, I, I just remember that Ishmael is um, is is the, is the kid. Uh, I, I believe it's the kid of of uh, Hagar, which was Abraham's, which was the maid servant um, of uh, of Sarah and Abraham. That Sarah or had had him sleep with because she was barren. So before Isaac was born. So it's, I think it was like a revenge thing or something. Right, Jacob's dream of Bethel. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he when uh, when he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching it to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east. To the north and to the south, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. And I, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, was in this place, and I was not, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, and there's a little footnote that says Bethel means house of God. Though the city used to be called Luz. When, then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking, and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, so that I return safely to my brothers and to my father's house, then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house, and of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Alright, that was 29. Some more story there. You know, and stuff like that. Pretty pretty interesting. Um, nothing, nothing really much to say. You know, uh, Jacob had a dream, you know, and uh, yeah, he had a dream, you know, prophecy thing. And I, I, I'm curious to know why God made such an effort to tell it, because he's already, God already told him that before, right? Like, he was like, oh yeah, I will spread your descendants and stuff like that. So yeah, here he, he does it like twice. I don't, I don't know what the time difference, span difference was between the first and the last time. Between that time and the time before, though. But, uh, but yeah, just an interesting thought, I think. Anyway, yep, yeah, that's it. Chapter 29, I mean, chapter 28. And uh, if you have a comment, um, have something you want to say or point out about this passage or any other passage that, that you come to mind, you know, and stuff like that, then uh, put, you, feel free to put it down in the comments, of course. And, uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the, uh, in the next one, maybe.